Okay, let's talk about the Praxis II middle school math exam. And the test code for that exam is 5169. And uh, if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this certification exam and become a middle school math teacher, which is outstanding. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the Praxis II middle school math exam. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include a Praxis II middle school math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But if you haven't taken a look at what is on this exam in terms of the level of math, you really need to do so because it's more than just basic middle school math or even basic uh, high school level math. There's a considerable amount of, I would I would kind of classify it as advanced high school level math uh, mathematics on top of basic math and more even uh, like elementary level concepts. So um, you really have to study to, uh, to do well on these exams. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a problem that, again, you know, you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared right now. Okay, so the way I like to do these little videos is, one, just explain the problem, and then I'm going to give a hint here in a second uh, that I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so here's the problem. We have some sort of function, and I want to know is x equal 1 a 0. Okay, so hopefully that means something to you folks out there. Okay, I have a function and I'm asking a very direct question. Is x uh, equal 1 a 0 to this particular function? All right, so if you think you can do the problem, or even if you're not quite sure, you should pause the video and think about it and try to do it on your own. Okay, all right, so if you need a hint, I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint now. If you don't want to hear the hint, obviously pause the video and uh, here we go with a hint. All right, so uh, what does it mean? First of all, we got this uh, word zero. What does that even mean? Well, a zero in mathematics is kind of synonymous with uh, the word root, uh, but basically it means a solution, okay? So is x equal one a solution to this particular function? Now, I like the word zero because it's descriptive and I kind of put it in, uh, uh, you know, directly, you know, into this problem to see if you understood this concept of zero. So here I have a function, right? It's some sort of, if you look at it, what kind of, here's another little question for you. What kind of function are we dealing with, right? How would you describe this as a linear function? Is it a rational function, radical function, logarithmic function, uh, <laughs> go on and on and on. No, the answer is what? It's a quadratic function, right? Because we could see we have x squared, x, Etc. So a zero, when we want to think about this, is I'm just going to draw a parabola. Okay, and this is y, this is x. So a parabola is the shape that the shape of a quadratic function. Now you can have all kinds of parabolas. They can go like this and go the other way. Some of them may not even cross the x-axis, but if they do cross the x-axis, okay. These are the points right here where y is equal to zero, okay? So these points we would call, well, we would call these zeros, roots, or solutions. Real number, real number, okay? Uh, roots or solutions. So I'm kind of going off on a little bit of a tangent, but basically I'm asking you, is x equal one a solution to this quadratic equation, quadratic function? So how can you check that, okay? Well, there's two... Uh, well, there's a couple different ways you could do that. You could solve this guy and just uh, see, hey, is x equal 1 uh, one of the solutions? You could do that, but that's not necessary, okay? Um, there's two other direct uh, paths that you should uh, do. The, the first one is just evaluate the function for f equals 1. So now I'm going to get into solving this problem right now, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and plug in f equals 1, and let's see what happens, all right? So we get this. Let's see what occurs when we uh, plug in 1 for the function. And I'm going to get 1 squared, which is obviously 1 times 8. So that's 8 plus 16 minus 24. You can kind of see where this is going, right? I'm going to get 24 minus 24 is equal to 0. So f of 1 is 0. So f of 1 
is equal to zero. So f of one is a zero. In other words, it's a solution, a real number solution to this function, okay? But there is another um, cool thing that you can do and you need to know how to do, and that's synthetic division, okay? So when we're talking about solving more advanced polynomial equations, now this is a quadratic equation, but it's also uh, a, um, a, a polynomial equation. And one of the things you need to know is synthetic division. So we found out here that f equals 1 uh, equals 0, indicating that it is, in fact, a root, a real number uh, solution, and a 0. Okay, so the answer is yes, it is a 0. But let's talk about how we can evaluate a function using synthetic division, okay? So the way that would look, would look like so. Here, let me draw this a little bit better. And this is not necessary for you to um, have solved this problem, but I'm just kind of bringing back, refreshing your memory on synthetic division, if you don't remember. Okay, so synthetic division is where we take the coefficients, as long as this thing is written in standard form, we're gonna take the coefficients here, so this is gonna be eight, 16 and negative 24, okay? You write them like so, as long as this is in standard form, and if you're missing something, you'd plug in a zero. I'm really going super fast as far as the overview of synthetic division. Now I'm going to be uh, synthetically dividing this function by one, okay? Which is effectively, okay, doing all of this right here is the same thing as evaluating this function for one. So we already uh, determined that f of 1 was equal to 0. But here is, again, synthetic division, which is doing the same thing. So the way this works, okay, you first, this first number, okay, this first value, you, you drop down like so, 8. Now you go 1 times 8, whatever this value is, 1 times 8 is 8. You're going to pl put that right there, your answer right there. Next, you're going to add down, all right, so 16 plus 8 is what? 24. Now you're going to repeat that first step. So 1 times 24 is 24, positive 24. You you put that here. And because this is our last value, this is, um, well, kind of like our remainder. And you can see negative 24 plus 24 is 0, OK? So because our remainder is 0, this indicates that this 1, OK, this is what this is equal to. In other words, this is the same thing as f of 1 is equal to 0. Whatever this value is, is the result of, of um, you evaluating for a particular function. So for example, let's say we plugged in f of 7. I'm not saying this is the value, but let's say f of 7 was 15, OK? Well, if you had a 7 right here, we wouldn't end up with a 15 down here, OK? All right. So. Synthetic division, evaluating functions, uh, these are concepts you need to be very familiar with, especially at the middle school math level, because you're going to be teaching or qualified to, uh, to be teaching Algebra 1. And Algebra 1, there's quadratic equations, you're talking about polynomials, you're really setting students up uh, as a, uh, for their foundation into, you know, obviously more advanced math, Algebra 2, pre-calculus, and beyond. All right, so again, I don't uh, think that this is an overly difficult problem, but there are many, many uh, topics that you got to be familiar with to do well on the Praxis II Middle School Math Exam. All right, so let's go and wrap up this video. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description of this video to my test prep course all my, uh, uh, on this particular uh, Praxis Middle School uh, Math uh, certification exam. All my courses have taken me literally years to build. I do a lot of research, um, and believe me, I've taught these uh, courses as well. Um, I will say this much, um, you know, don't underestimate these exams, okay? So hopefully if this is your first time taking a teacher certification exam, even if you're good in math, like, and I'm assuming you are and you like math, obviously you want to teach the, the subject, is you still have to do, you know, really immerse yourself in high school level mathematics because maybe the last course you took was like calculus well that cal that's great and stuff but you've been away from you know you're not doing synthetic division and things like that in the calculus necessarily right you got to get back to you know these main topics you got to immerse yourself in so don't just go by your memory and be like oh i was good in math i'll be just fine do the work and really study hard 
Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, hopefully you consider subscribing. I've been on uh, YouTube for a good, at least the time of this video, I think 12 plus years. So already on my channel, I have hundreds of videos that can help you prepare for this exam if you like my teaching style. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what's your, your story? Are you going from high school to college to the classroom, which is cool? Or maybe you are, you know, retired from a particular career. You know, you're an engineer and now you want to go ahead and teach. That's awesome as well. There's so many different programs these days uh, for people who, you know, later in life want to become teachers uh, to become a teacher. I think that's great. But I will say this much. Um, you know, half of teaching is all your certification, your professional knowledge, your, you know, getting your degree, all that stuff. The other half is, you know, learning how to deal with students, parents, administration, uh, pacing, exams, grading, <laughs> and that stuff takes time to learn. I always encourage those of you out there who watch my videos, um, are going to become teachers, is latch on to those veteran teachers and give yourself time to build experience. It's the same thing. I like to use analogy of be like becoming an airline pilot. You can go to all the best schools to learn how to fly an airplane, et cetera. But until you've flown that airplane 10,000 hours, you know, you're not going to be an experienced pilot. Okay. Same thing with teaching. It takes time to develop your uh, experience and find your own style. Okay. You do not have to be a copycat of another teacher. You could have two teachers, completely different personalities and teaching styles are both highly effective. Uh, their students love, and they're both equally successful, okay? So you have to find your own way. So learn from those teachers that are, you know, been doing it for a long time until you develop your own style. But it takes time, and uh, it takes more than just one year of teaching. That I can assure you. But with that being said, I think it's awesome that you want to teach middle school math. I definitely wish you all the best on this exam and all your endeavors in your education career. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.